Hi, All right. Go ahead, Tatiana. Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Tatiana Moroz. Thank you very much for joining us at this kickoff event for Tatiana Coin. I'm joined with my friend Adam B. Levine from Let's Talk Bitcoin. Um, Adam has guided me through this process along with some other uh, key people. And, um, you know, this coin has never been done before. And it's a learning experience for all of us. It's an experiment in trying to figure out new ways okay, to do stuff. Um, Thank you very much. Endeavors. Oh, hi, David. David. Are fine with us? Hi, David. Um, Go ahead, Tatiana. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Tatiana Morose. Thank I you see very myself. much He's here my for joining us at this kick. Okay. So anyway, sorry about that. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring the audience along with us on this journey. We don't know what's going to happen, but this is the place where people can tune in on a weekly basis and get their questions answered and participate um, with us along this path. So Tatiana, should I play the video for everybody just as kind of a precursor to, the, to you know, this call? Yes, that sounds great. <laughs> uh, it sounds like we weren't broadcasting audio with that video, so this might have been a little bit less interesting than otherwise. Tatiana, why don't you go through, uh, why don't you go through uh, what it is that we're doing with Tatiana Coin in a nutshell? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, well, um, basically, you know, the, um, the concept of Tatiana Coin was brought up with me, um, I guess, back in Berlin. Um, at the time, I was like, yeah, okay, haha, Tatiana Coin, whatever. Um, but then, Adam, you know uh, very well that uh, you approached me about it and you kind of explained it to me in a little bit of a different way. We had actually had a concept uh, talk uh, like a month before that as well. So um, basically what Tatiana Coin is, is it's a crowdfunding campaign or crowd sale, but instead of giving you just a t-shirt, a CD, a this or a that, you get a token system. So you can trade in those tokens for a variety of prizes and you can decide later what those prizes are going to be. Um, the goal is to raise awareness for my project and if I do well then we hope that the value of those tokens um, will go up because they'll become more desirable because I'll have so many rabid fans that want my autograph CD that the people who participated in the very beginning they get rewarded and, um, and they get something a little bit more long term and I think that it builds uh, a longer relationship with, with my um, fans as well. I want to provide a little bit of context about, um, I couldn't get my camera working today, uh, I want to provide a little bit of context about uh, kind of the thought behind artist coins and why Kickstarter is not a better solution than doing something like this. Um, and you know, Tatiana, you said it, it's the, uh, it's that it lets you make decisions later, but I think that you kind of downplayed the, the actual value that is being had here. Essentially what you're doing is this is a Kickstarter campaign. You are raising uh, you, you are, you know, raising funds through donations in order to produce an, a piece of art that you then will have to somehow distribute. And again, uh, essentially, so once the art is funded, then the prizes are available. But before that point, if you say, I'm going to use this money to do this thing, but then you don't do that thing, or you don't do it quite as well as people want, or you do it a little bit differently, or whatever, or someone changed their mind in the middle, it doesn't even have to be about you, or more importantly, if somebody discovers your campaign after you've already closed the funding round. With a token, they have the option to either buy the token or sell the token from somebody else who participated in the campaign, whereas with a Kickstarter campaign, you're locked in to that, 
you know, to whatever it was that you picked at the beginning at whatever price you picked at the beginning. There's no recourse for you whatsoever. Whereas here, uh, you get to make the choice. You can you can increase your stake if you think the things are going well. Well, you can decrease your stake, and the whole market gets to make that decision. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that people uh, have pointed out, or, or that I think is sort of relevant, is that whole Oculus Rift story, um, where they had a bunch of people. They raised, I think, two million dollars for them in the in their Indiegogo or Kickstarter, whatever campaign it was. And then they sold the company for two billion dollars, like a year or two later. And they, um, and all those people that had given the money in the beginning, they got nothing out of it. You know, they got their stupid T-shirt, and that's it. So I think that that sol this solves that problem a little bit as well, wouldn't you say? Right. I I totally agree. I think that it does solve that problem. Um, and you know, it, it generally, this is definitely an experiment. But that's the thought: is that if cryptocurrency and if tokens are about the network effect then artists and people who travel around are actually pretty good representatives for cryptocurrency. And so again, Tatiana, I don't think that, you know, again, um, Tatiana coin is being built on top of Bitcoin itself. So it's not like this is really competing with Bitcoin. It's more like it's competing with a, with a, with a uh, another crowdfunding campaign at, say, like BitcoinStarter.com. Like that's the type of project this competes with, except there again, you have the same problem. You donate Bitcoin and then you're locked in until the project delivers. And if the project does then you're unhappy or if the project changes or whatever. But the point is is that if you have a token, then you have the option, whereas if you don't have a token, then you've just given someone money. Interesting. So um, how do people how do people buy Tatiana Coin? That's the first question that I always get. Um, so maybe we could... Yeah, so... What, what's, the, what's the back end like? Well, you know, I know that we have our 3 million coins that we're doing. The pricing mechanism is 100,000 coins a day where people are bidding for it. But maybe you can explain that to people a little bit more clearly than I can. Yeah, um, actually we have David Irvine on this call too, which is really uh, serendipitous or, or great because uh, their project, MadeSafe, was a really big impetus for why we did this sort of crazy pricing scheme that we wound up going with for uh, for trying to figure out Tatiana Coin. Because Tatiana Coin, ultimately, the number of them doesn't really matter that much because like a Bitcoin is really a hundred million Satoshis. We don't think about it like that, but in actuality it is. And this is much the same with Tatiana coin, is that we could issue one Tatiana coin and there would be a hundred million units of it that you could then trade just as if. But so so anyway, so what we wound up doing is we decided, okay, three million is a good number. It's a lot less than Bitcoin, but it still is enough that people can, you know, give some to somebody without feeling like they're giving away at all. Um, and then for the amount of money, essentially in order to properly what the heck am I saying here? So what you can do is each day we allocate 100,000 Tatiana coins. We don't give them away at this point, but people who donate to the campaign that uh, you know to create Tatiana's art um, essentially are having their donation logged in the Bitcoin blockchain. At the end of the campaign, if Tatiana has raised uh, enough money to actually go through with her project, which we've set at $25,000, then um, uh, then essentially we go through all of the donations at the end and we uh, analyze it by day using a, a script that gives us a readout at the end that shows each person's share per day relative to their contribution. So for a simple, uh, for a simple example, if I have, uh, you know, if I'm going to donate uh, one Bitcoin to Tatiana and I'm the only person who donates on the third day, then I would get all 100,000 Tatiana coins. But if I donate to Tatiana on the fourth day, and a hundred people all donate. Uh, you know, 99 people besides me all donate uh, one Bitcoin. Then my one Bitcoin in that day is only one one hundredth of the amount, and so I get one one hundredth of the Tatiana coin. So we did this because we don't know what a good price for Tatiana coin is, and this is a way that the market gets to decide every day for 30 days. And so at the end of it, we should actually have a kind of decent idea of what the token should actually be worth. Uh, we hope that it'll raise, you know, more than twenty-five thousand dollars in U.S. dollars because those are the terms we have to think about funds in, since that's how Tatiana will be paying people, but uh, you know, paying her her uh, existing contacts for this stuff. But as far as the relative contribution, it's really so today. Uh, so so so, anyways, um, so going back to how do you get Tatiana coin? Let's take a look at that page real quick. So this is the Tatiana Coin Coin Powers uh, page. Uh, Coin Powers is a platform I'm a co-founder of, um, essentially designed around creating these 
sort of either crowd sales or donation drives, or really it depends on the project. Um, and uh, this is this is it in a nutshell. So you've got the the video up front, and then on, on the right hand side you've got donate BTC or XCP2, and you can click to unmask the address. The reason why you have to click to unmask the address is because you ha we really would like you to read the terms and conditions because this is as we explain in the terms and conditions, a completely experimental project and ultimately there is no contractual liability whatsoever uh, that can allow you to recover anything. So you should really be thinking about this like a donation that could wind up being more if we're successful here rather than as an investment because flatly the technology is too new for anything like this to be considered an investment. Um, so with that out of the way, you can see on the right hand side, again it says total Tatiana coins exist, 3 million, that's the total number that will uh, be created by the end of this, at the end of 30 days. Each daily auction is for 100,000 tokens. Today we've had, uh, today is the first day and we're I think six hours in, or I guess ten hours in. Um, we've had 117.43 donated and that's all been in Bitcoin and, and uh, XCP which is the currency of Counterparty. Um, you can look it up on coinmarketcap.com or counterparty.co. Uh, so that means that for each person that donated they are getting one Tatiana coin for every 0.0011743 US dollars. So less than one one hundredth, no, sorry, a little bit more than one one hundredth of a penny. No, one tenth of a cent. Oh gosh, I'm terrible at math. I'm so bad at this. But the point is, is that it's incredibly inexpensive. But that's not the real price yet because the price will actually be determined at the end of the day. So what you should do, the best strategy if you're going to be uh, donating to Tatiana is actually to donate uh, one thirtieth of your donation each day because then you get uh, you add only a little bit to the price but you um, but you make it so that you have exposure to all thirty days the whole uh, three million money supply you get a share of all of it as opposed to if you just donated all of it on one day where you would get a much larger share of a much smaller supply so on each day the mo most anybody can get is a hundred thousand Tatiana coins so again, like there, there are some interesting dynamics here. But again, the idea is, is that we don't know what the price is, and we're asking the market to help us figure it out. What is a fair price for Tatiana coin? If you think that the price for Tatiana coin is good, if you think the one tenth of a penny is a good price, then today is probably a good day to donate. If you don't think that's a good price, it's probably not a good day to donate. But ultimately, we're gonna use the market to figure it out. So uh, I, I'm kind of feel like I'm filibustering here. Tatiana, do you have any questions or anything that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that maybe we could walk everybody through actually purchasing it because I think that that's, that's the real trick. You know, some people aren't really into cryptocurrency, so yeah. they may not know. And, and in general, just having that streamlined, maybe we could talk about that. And then yeah, are there any questions popping up or you don't know? Um, I'm not seeing any questions. Let me check again real quick. But um, so as far as buying Tatiana Coin is concerned, the first thing that you need to do is you need to acquire Bitcoin. So the two best ways, as far as I'm concerned, at the moment, and your results may vary, uh, are either local bitcoins, uh, where you can essentially just put in your location and either deal with somebody. They have a, a nice reputational system built in. So even though it's not really recommended to um, to buy bitcoin with like a credit card or a wire transfer or anything like that, because those instruments can be reversed. Um, local bitcoins, people are sometimes comfortable doing this. I, I don't really like buying it through this um, because I don't like dealing person to person where someone can steal from you. I'd rather actually have a company that's incentivized to make sure that I'm really happy with their service. So I use Coinbase and uh, Coinbase is really as simple as just uh, you know as uh, registering on the site um, and you in order to buy Bitcoin you uh, link your bank account and you uh, confirm a phone number and so it's not a anonymous thing by any means whatsoever but it is pretty fast and it's uh, relatively simple for people who are you know again it's like as complicated as online banking is um, as opposed to local bitcoins where generally you have to actually go and meet somebody in person um, okay. if you have an and Android if phone using, if they were using local it? bitcoins they need their own wallet right so they could get that at blockchain or where else and then or they could do the coinbase option right yeah so you can wallet built in uh, yes you're right local bitcoins doesn't have a wallet built in it depends on what type of um, mobile device you have uh, you'll want to get um, you know if you have uh, Android then my preferred application is called mycelium wallet um, and it actually has a local trader feature built in that's very similar where you put in, you know, in the application itself, I want to buy this much Bitcoin and it 
syncs your location, and then it looks around you for other people who are who are who have matching um, needs to whatever you have, and then essentially it helps you make. It basically does what local bitcoins does, except it's already built into a wallet application. So once you've acquired Bitcoin through either local Bitcoins, Coinbase, or whatever it is that's your preferred method, um, you are going to go over to counterwallet.co. This will help you set up a, this, this allows you to set up a um, new type of wallet called a multi-wallet. And How is so, uh, like this, a regular wallet? Is it multi because it can hold different kinds of, um, is it because it can hold different kinds of uh, currencies? Yeah, exactly, because it can hold... Bitcoin and Tatiana coin and LTB coin and any other coin that's built on top of counterparty can be held by the same Bitcoin addresses. So Tatiana, when I send you, you know, some Tatiana coin, uh, I'll actually be sending it to your Bitcoin address. It won't be a specific, you know, you, you're not going to have to download a client or anything. So when you go to counter wallet, the first thing you want to do is click create new wallet. Whoops. Create new wallet. Okay, and then it has a essentially random uh, generator that generates a, a um, that generates a brain wallet, and this brain wallet is your private key. So the thing that you do is you write it down. I'm not going to write this one down because it's you know it's an example one, but I'm just going to take it and copy it into the log into your wallet. But you'll want to really write this down and memorize it and you know take care of it because it's it's your keys. You can click Open Wallet. It's going to ask me to accept the terms, uh, which basically says that this incredibly experimental technology, just like CoinPowers is telling you, and that if you're risk averse or you know are concerned about this sort of thing, then probably you should wait until the technology is further along in six or twelve months. Um, so, uh, so once you accept the terms, then your wallet comes up. And so you start off with three addresses. Um, and uh, I'm going to just switch over real quickly to a wallet I set up a little bit earlier. Okay, so this is uh, a wallet that I set up a little earlier that I am going to use as the wallet to which I donate to Tatiana's campaign. Um, I've been a supporter of Tatiana's. Tatiana, we met back in October, I guess, in Georgia, I think. Mm-hmm, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw her perform in Georgia, and you know, and again, so I've been really interested in pushing forward on this project. So again, I'd I'd like to send her some. So I've actually got both my address in there, the my address at the top, that's uh, that's the one that I control. But then there's one down below that says Tatiana's campaign. It has a little eye icon next to it and says Watch Only. That actually is Tatiana's campaign address. So right now, as we're looking at it live, and I I don't have the keys to spend from it, but I have the keys to see what's in it because it's on the public ledger. So, so far she's received 0.9 XCP and 0.17 Bitcoin. Uh, so that's great. I like that. Um, my, let's see here. So I'm going to give her 0.15 Bitcoin over the next 30 days of this campaign. So that means that each of my donations per day should be 0.005 Bitcoin. And then at the end of that, I will have given her about $100 based on current prices. But I will have done it in such a way that I will not have pushed up the price. Because if you, like, if I put in... If uh, if I put in one Bitcoin right now, over at uh, you know on your address, then I would uh, get absolutely the largest proportion of today's coins. But tomorrow's coins, I wouldn't have any share of those unless I put in more money. So it makes more sense to me as a donor who's looking at this to maximize my impact to you know send you 0.05 or sorry 0.005 every day, and then at the end of it, I will have sent you the same amount. But that interim means that I have exposure to all three million of the coins, as opposed to only a hundred thousand. So let's do that now. I'm just going to send it real quick. Go. Well, I think I'm going to send it real quick. Hmm, it appears I may have uh, logged out while I had this idling here. Hang on a second. Okay. So can Tatiana coin only be purchased with the counterpart uh, the counter counter wallet? No, it actually can be purchased with um well this is irritating and embarrassing. It's not working right now. It's not letting me select it. Um but uh no. Uh no. What'll happen is that if you um 
is that if you don't use Counter Wallet, like if you just have CryptoKit or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just like a little application or a little wallet or something, you can send it to Tatiana's address. But what will happen is that when Tatiana Coin comes out, your wallet probably won't know what to do with the Tatiana Coin that we send back. So you'll have to then recover, get your private key and import it into a wallet that, that can understand it. So it's like, um, so all Bitcoin transactions have Bitcoin information, but, and all XCP transactions have Bitcoin information. But XCP transactions, or sorry, but Bitcoin transactions don't have XCP information. And so uh, you need to be able to, to interpret this information. And essentially that's what's happening here. Your wallet, normally, uh, generally speaking, isn't going to be able to interpret it yet. So for regular people, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a something, just a little hurdle to jump over, right? I mean, I want to. Well, this is the way I look at this. So, whole thing, okay, so, right? Is that I'm trying to be like a regular person that's trying to figure it out because this is all really new, and one of the things that I'd really like to see with this project is kind of making it accessible. So, um, so just something for people to know that then they would later on have to get a wallet that accepts XCP, right? Yes. Yeah. If you want to just send it to Tatiana's address then you will have your claim, you will receive back Tatiana coin. But you'll have to jump through an extra step at the end as opposed to if you just set up a counter wallet in the beginning, send your Bitcoin to your counter wallet and then send your uh, Bitcoin from your counter wallet to Tatiana coin's address. It is totally a rigmarole. But again, Tatiana, it's because we're one of the first. Well, I, so think, that that, I think that that seems like a good option for people who are new to this to just open up a counter wallet from the beginning, you know? Right. No, exactly. It simplifies a lot of things because then, you know, on the day that they come back, you don't have to do anything. It's just already there sitting in your in your wallet. And so you can see on the screen that it says BTC and XCP. And uh, what will essentially happen is that you'll have another box that will be in there that will say Tatiana coin. And it will say whatever your balance is for that. Okay, cool. So... <laughs> It doesn't appear that I'm able to actually send this right now, which is bizarre because, as I mentioned, I've been doing this just about all day, not uh, sending tokens to Tatiana's campaign. You should have been sending the whole day sending me tokens. Yeah, right. Well, not quite so much yet, Tatiana. Uh, so anyways, um, that's the basic thing is that you click on the tab here. Sorry, that was the campaign address. Uh, the campaign address you don't have any options with, but you click on the tab there, you click send, you type in Tatiana's address, and you can actually see it right up here. And, and then you so click if the people send button. No, go ahead, I'm sorry. And then you click the send button, and uh, within a couple of minutes, it will have been logged to the Bitcoin blockchain, and you'll, your uh, donation will be there. And if you need to be refunded, uh, uh, incidentally... Um, if uh, you know Tatiana doesn't reach her goal, then we also have an address by which we can send your funds back to you without ever knowing who you are or anything. Um, also, if people want to find out the address, they have to sign the terms and conditions because somebody said that they wanted to generously donate some money to my campaign, but they have to go to the Coin Power site and they have to click the "I accept," right? Uh, yeah, basically we need you to accept the terms and conditions because otherwise we don't know if you understand that this is you know, a new experimental thing. So that's that's our primary concern is we really don't want anybody to uh, to take risk that they're not comfortable with. This is risky. It's not risky from a technical standpoint necessarily, but it's risky because it's never been done before. And it's risky because, you know, it's the first time that it's been done. A lot of these tools are first-time tools. So something could go wrong. We have done everything we can. We've been prepping for this for months and feel like, you know, this is... Uh, a very solid system, but at the same time, you know, it's never been done before, so you can't have any sort of certainty whatsoever. Um, another thing that, you know, people have been bringing up with me in the forums is like, how do I know this isn't a scam and a pump and dump? Now, I'm relatively new to understanding some of the more, um, you know, I mean, I don't even really, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never pumped and dumped before, I don't really know how it goes, but I'm assuming it's, oh, you say something's good and then you sell it all, but that's not what this is, because People can only use Tatiana Coin in the Tatiana Coin store right now, and then later on, hopefully, I'll be on an exchange. So I'm thinking that in order to assuage people's concerns with that, I mean, I'm an artist. I've been making music this whole entire time. Regardless of whether or not we raise this money, I'm going to do a third album. This is more to figure out how I'm going to fund it. Um, you know, so I don't think that people have to worry that all of a sudden they're not going to get what they're paying for. I mean... What are some of the prizes? You know, a house concert. I mean, I'm not going to not show up at somebody's house 
So I, I guess that's well, the only so Tatiana, way. Well, so Tatiana, most of this is stuff that you want to do anyways, right? I mean, right, like that's exactly. the core thing here is that this is it, it's not like you're being like, all right, guys, well, I'm only gonna make this if you you know give me money. It's not really like that. It's more like I am making this. If you want to help me, I would love to reward you with this coin that you can then use to get what I make at the end because you let me do it. Right. And it's more fun stuff than just buying it at a store and in iTunes because, you know, I don't know, obviously anybody who's going to help me along the way is going to be in a higher regard and there is some exclusivity for those uh, for those prizes as well. You know, some of the stuff you can still get with FRNs, but um, there will be, you know, music will be more available to the first people that donated to the campaign in the first place. And, you know, I mean, the prizes that are on the website so people can check them out. Um. David uh, has commented in the chat. He says, uh, "Daily auction, great idea. Um, seeing the terms and conditions may put off folks a wee bit, though I am comfortable with the risk. I think many BTC folks not comfortable putting their details into a web form. And I think that you're totally right about that. Um, one of the things that you can do with uh, so let me go back to that page real quick. Okay, so at first you see that it says click to unmask address. Let's click that. So you actually have a lot of options at this point. You can log in, you can sign up, you can use social to sign up, or you can just uh, sign up as a guest to see it. And signing up as a guest doesn't retain any information about you at all, um, except that you know we feel like you've read the terms and conditions because you've said that you did. We encourage you to read the terms and conditions. They are, you know, we uh, have been working with Pamela Morgan um, from Empowered Law on them and think that it's it's a decent representation of what we're doing. And again, the point is is that. This is, you know, this is a real project. I'm, I'm emphasizing that there's risk here, but it's only because this is so new and I don't want people to feel like I'm aggressively selling something here. It's not the case. I think that if you want to support Tatiana's work and you want to support what Tatiana's doing, this is a way to do it where if she's successful as a result of this work, people all around her benefit and people who supported her getting their benefit. And I think that that's, I mean, like, that's my primary focus in this space is making it so that individual... Um, so that uh, you know, so that individual content creators and people who want to make projects can connect with the people who want to enable them, and then they can just make whatever they want together. Because that's the, I think that's a big part of the concern about it being a Ponzi um, or you know some other type of scam, is that like there's nothing here, and that's just not the case. There's really something here. I, you know, like Tatiana, as we've been doing you know conferences for Bitcoin stuff around the country, you know, like I see you over and over and over again. You travel way more than I do. I've taken like a six month hiatus so I can work and you're still constantly traveling, you know, because this is the thing that you like to do. So I mean that's that's really where I come to it from. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm at a lot of different conferences and stuff like that. And I think that if people do a little research then they know that I've been doing this for a while. So I mean, you know, I've, I've known about Bitcoin for years. I just didn't really get it get it until last year. Um, but, I mean, it's not like I'm some random weirdo that came off the street and said, hey, I'm going to do a weird Bitcoin campaign, give me my money, and then kind of disappear <laughs> uh, with buckets of, of XCP. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to stop making So that is something else that's worth uh, mentioning is that... Uh is that uh, this is the first campaign, I think, that has ever accepted XCP, too. You know, because there's, there's another one that's going around that's still in stealth mode, but they're only accepting Bitcoin. So if you have XCP and you want to support projects having XCP, looking right now at the uh, coin powers, let me see. Yeah, you can see that 97.6% of the donations so far have come in in BTC. So, again, like, this is all rationalizing down to U.S. dollar values um, at the based on the time that it's given. So if you give a donation, whatever the current value is at the time you give the donation is what we record for you and, and for everybody else. Um, and this makes it so that there doesn't have to be an exchange rate between Bitcoin and XCP that we fix or anything like that. Again, the whole idea here is that we don't know what the right answer is. We want the audience and we want the, the community to tell us what the right answer is. So again, if you feel strongly about XCP, then you should probably do donate in that rather than the BTC. So can people sell Tatiana coin after the fact? Like, how does that heart part work? People have been asking me that. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, we haven't necessarily, again, like, we're, we're taking this slow. So we haven't talked with uh, any exchanges specifically about listing Tatiana coin. I have personally had conversations with several exchanges um, about listing this type of coin. And this is a very interesting type of coin to them because it's a coin that's backed by real value and has somebody standing out in front of it and saying, this is me. So it's very different from a coin that is mined and the miners are in favor of it. 
Uh, this is this is something where the value is going to support a specific thing, and it's not the enabling, you know, it's not the processing of transactions through mining, it's whatever the project is. All of the value goes to whatever the project is. So um, as far as how you sell them, initially, so let me pull up CounterWallet again. So you can click the buy and sell tab, and then you say, I want to, you know, buy P. Whoops, okay, well, I don't have any Tatiana coins, so let's do it the other way. You're missing out. Okay, so I want to uh, uh, buy Tatiana coin and sell Bitcoin. From that address, and I click Next, and it goes through, and basically, uh, you can use this as a decentralized exchange. I can't set this up right now because, again the assets relevant here, but that is the interface. It's actually pretty straightforward. It's built into the multi-wallet itself. Oh, so they can sell my Tatiana coin just peer-to-peer -peer in the counterparty wallet. Exactly, yeah. So there's no exchange for it, but on a person-to-person -person basis, it's actually very easy. Um, and again, that technology has still, you know, over the last couple of weeks, getting better. They're still having some problems with order matching where, like, uh, where it's just taking a longer time to match your order, and it's actually much easier to buy or sell it for XCP than it is for Bitcoin. Bitcoin requires you to wait like an hour uh, because there are, you need a bunch of confirmations, but XCP is actually automated. So if you just set up the buy order or the sell order and you have XCP on the other side of it, then you can basically just walk away from it and once your order is matched, it'll automatically fulfill. Whereas buying or selling for Bitcoin, then you have to actually sit there, and when it's time to do the pay, you have to, do the, you have to actually take that action yourself. So it's just a little uh, note there uh, for when people are thinking about buying or selling these. It's less of a headache if you go through counterparties, uh, XCP, rather than trying to go through Bitcoin. And then you can go from XCP to Bitcoin or whatever at, a, at an exchange. Good to know. Yeah, um, so... So what else do we have, Tatiana? Uh, again, we're going to be talking about this uh, weekly for the next couple of weeks while the campaign's going on. And again, like the thing to keep in mind is that unlike a Kickstarter campaign where you just go to it once, give your money once, and then kind of forget about it, this is going to be kind of a more active campaign. And we're going to be doing you know, these hangouts, and there will be updates. And every day, essentially, is a new opportunity to be the first or only donor uh, or one of many. And again, like it's, it's just up to people to determine what they think are good days to donate versus what they think aren't good days. Okay, cool. So are there, um, you know, should we talk about, like, the larger plans for hopefully this model? I mean, we don't really know what's going to happen with this model. But, you know, I think just one thing I want to kind of point out to people about my personal interest is, you know, obviously I want to fund my album, blah, 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 and, like, the different projects that I have. Um, but I see this as a really great opportunity of changing the whole entire bootstrapping of ideas, period. You know what I mean? I think it's almost make... I was talking with this really, really cool lady, um, Elise Killeen. She's a VC down in, in down in LA, and and she was like, you know, explain to me the concept of how everybody can be a venture capitalist, and we we're kind of applying it to this. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like it's a group participation in something on on a on a tiny level. Do you know what I'm saying? Like anybody from their own household, if they believe in something, they can make a donation, and they can maybe get a return on that. Would you say that that's an accurate way of looking at it? Well, I think that um, regardless of its accuracy, it's something that we can't uh, because this is not an investment. They are not venture capitalists. I think that in, pr in principle what you're saying um, ideologically is correct, but in the eyes of the law, these are donations and there is no legal obligation. So unlike a venture capitalist, they do not have equity in you. They merely have your token. Now, that doesn't mean that there's nothing you know, nothing suggesting to you that you should actually follow through on what you said. Actually, it means that it's more, because lacking that, it means that you have to be on your absolute best behavior, Tatiana. That's you what have I was to saying. Be, exactly. Okay. You have to be incredibly responsible with this. Yeah. That's that's kind of how I look at it, too. It's like, because if, I, if it doesn't do well, or rather, I mean, whatever, if nobody has an interest in it, that's embarrassing. 
But if, if people, you know, give me a bunch of money and then I run off, then I'm the one that's stuck looking like a loser and no one will ever trust me again. It's that kind of the... Right, exactly. So, I mean, like, you're, you know, and to a certain extent, it's me too. We're putting our faces on this. And again, if, if nobody gives you the money to do it, then that sucks. But it's not, like, it's not a bad reflection on us. But if, if we go through with this and launch the thing and then everybody, you know, it funds properly and we get to the end and then everybody's like, all right, cool, we're ready to turn in our tokens for the, for the rewards. And we're like, oh yeah, just kidding, never mind, sorry, we decided that we weren't doing that like three minutes ago, so sorry, you know, take a hike. Uh, then that would be obviously, suddenly the people who were our biggest fans and were like, oh, this is great, you know, they followed through with the project and I'm going to get to do the thing, suddenly these are the people who hate us the most because they gave us money and we screwed them. So there's like, there's the, again, like, if you're, if you're, if you have no reputation, then maybe that's an okay outcome to have everybody hate you. But if you have a reputation and it's like your real life, then that's really something that you, you try to avoid. It's, you know, why I'm so careful about what advertisements I put on Let's Talk Bitcoin is because my real name is attached to it. And so any trouble that an advertiser gives to our audience, I have to hear about it. And like, I have to feel bad about it because I intro I, I made that happen. So it's much the same here. The responsibility is all on you, and because of that, your reputation is on the line. If you, you know, if you, you can fail, but you can't be a bad actor. Okay. But more importantly, we think that we're going to succeed with this. Again, like we're talking about this because nobody knows what the heck is going to happen. But that's the thought here: is that you know this is a good model. This is a model that makes it so that if a project, you know, we've been talking about the like, okay, well, what if something goes wrong? But if something succeeds. And you know you continue to grow uh, your audience, and you continue to grow people who are interested. And you follow through on your word, and you deliver value to people who have your token. And however you decide to do it, you know uh, that has real value, and it adds it across the board for the entire token. So that's the thing: is that as you succeed, Tatiana, so do all of your backers. And I think that that's really, I mean, that's the carrot at the end of this: is that pick projects you think will succeed, and if they succeed, you benefit along with them. Yeah. Well, I think either way, no matter what, I'm still going to be doing conferences and stuff anyway. So I'll still be evangelizing the cause and whatnot. I mean, I'm, I believe in it. So even if it fails, I don't think it's a failure. You know what I mean? Even if this model doesn't work for me, because I'm, you know, people think I'm like a bad artist or something. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, it doesn't mean that this model couldn't be applied for other people as well. Well, right. Yeah, no, I completely agree. But again, like again, failure just means that we're not hitting the goal that we've set. And again, it might be because we're too early. Most people don't understand how these things work. And they look at it and they say, oh, it's a pre-mine. And they don't understand that there's no mining involved at any point in the process. They don't understand that the point of it isn't to process transactions. The point of it is to power a project. And so again, as time goes on, that realization is coming, uh, is coming about. And I think that, again, it's projects like Tatiana and Coin that once people understand them will really help to push forward that understanding. So, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of words. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about the project. Like I said, I've been working on a lot of projects. This is the first one to launch. And uh, I think that this is a really, it's, you know, the, the CoinPowers platform has come together. I wasn't even, you know, the reason why I'm a co-founder on CoinPowers is because we wound up doing Tatiana Coin on it. And so I wound up working with them really closely and doing all this other stuff. It's very interesting. Um, so, again, we're doing something crazy here. It's an experiment. But if you like what Tatiana is doing and you like her evangelism and you like her support and you like her being a player in this space, then essentially she's asking you for help. And if you can provide help, then she'll give you back a token in return that we'll all make valuable together as time goes on. Very cool. Um, okay, so next week we're going to be here. Do we have any questions from the audience? I know David is here. Maybe he had a question or anything. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you guys when the next speaking engagements are. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no questions for me, Tatiana. It's, it's just a, quite exciting for you, and uh, I wish all the best. It's a great project. Oh, thank you. It's very exciting. And you know I'm a big supporter of Mainsafe. I tell everybody. It's the only thing I think is cooler than Bitcoin. <laughs> Don't tell too right, guys, Paul, quick. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I was just uh, making a, a choke, that's all. Um, okay, great. So then no more questions. We're going to be on every week. You know, people can go to TatianaCoin.com. They can email us. They can send us messages and stuff and, um, and ask any kinds of questions. You know, people can't be there for the live Q&A. They can send me questions in advance, and I'll write them down and, and uh, bring them up. But the next one is going to be 
June 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So it's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're trying to make it so everybody on all the coasts can see it. And then there's uh, subsequent ones going forward from there. People can go to Tatiana Coin and get the most uh, updated schedule um, for that. But um, otherwise, all right, great. So does anybody have any other questions? That's it. Thank you so much for joining. Well, Tatiana, I want to congratulate you, you know, on making history and being one of the first, uh, being the first artist going to launch, I think, and, you know, one of the first projects to really have a full-blown crowdfunding campaign on the Counterparty platform. And, I mean, there's just, like, there's a whole variety of firsts that are going on here. So regardless of what happens, I think your place in the history books is definitely assured. Wow, that's that's very cool. I feel, uh, you know, you said something very funny to me. I was calling you, freaking out, saying, "Oh my God!" You're like, "Listen, pioneers, they used to have to die because they had to go out into the wild. At least you don't have to die." <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so All right. We, so we've made some progress. Well, I look forward to talking with you next time about this, Tatiana. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye bye.